Hey, this video is going to help with section 12.6 in course one, and it's called congruence in right triangles. So congruence in right triangles. Basically, it's the HL idea. HL happens to be um, the theorem that we kind of go over in this section. So HL is height or hypotenuse and leg. I almost said it wrong. So let's go over what we need for this HL and some examples of it. Here um, is what we need for this theorem to work for proving our congruence on our triangles. So we're still looking at triangles and we're still trying to prove that they're congruent. Now this one has right a right side on it and we need to have um, so both triangles have to have a right angle both triangles have right angle that's our first rule or thing that has to be true for this HL theorem the next thing is you need a congruent hypotenuses congruent high Hypotenuses. I think that's a word, hypotenuses. <laughs> anyway, so that's where the H comes from in the HL. And then the other one is they have to have one other leg, a pair of legs that's congruent. So one pair of congruent legs. And that's what we need for this HL theorem. Um, the, the thing that I kind of liked that the book went over with this HL idea is why this only works with the right triangle. It doesn't work with, um, a not right triangle. Let me show you the picture from the book and why that is. So the theorem <coughs> would spell a naughty word if it wasn't the HL theorem and it, we didn't have to have those right angles. Let me see, where is that pretty picture that they had? Well, I wrote down the page 734. Oh, here it is. So if we look at this picture here, this is what we, if we had an angle congruent that wasn't right and we had two other sides congruent where it goes angle side side so it's spelling a bad word so I'm not going to say it or you could think of it as side side angle spelling the bad word backward is still naughty so we can't have those um, SSA or side side angle right we can't have that because look this this side here could be really long or really short and you can clearly see that those are not congruent but they do have angle side side so we it is essential that when we use this HL theorem that we're careful that it has a right angle a hypotenuse and one pair of legs that's congruent and it will work so again as we learn all these theorems the one that doesn't work spells a naughty word or a naughty word backward. All right, so let's look at this HL theorem and kind of look at maybe some um, of the proofs or examples that they may have. So let's see here. What if I have I'm trying to make these look congruent as I go through here. All right, so let's say I'm given that this is a 90 degree angle, although it doesn't really look like a very good 90 degree angle. And let's say this one over here is also a 90 degree angle. Let's say we know that this side is congruent to this side, and we know that this is congruent to this. And, um, and let's label A. B, C, D, E, and they would list out how they gave us this information. So they would, they're, they'd list our given information. So let's say they say that B, E 
line B, um, bisects AD. So BE bisects AD. So that's how we get these two congruent. So maybe they gave us those two congruent with that information. Um, they could also have said like AB is perpendicular to BC. Okay, A, B, and B, C are perpendicular. That's why that's at a 90 degree angle. And D, E is perpendicular to E, C. All right, and the last is A, B is congruent to D, E. So A, B, and D, E are congruent. So we're given our information. A lot of times they draw it as well and, and already label. Um, so sometimes you're just given this and you have to draw based on your given and then come up with your proof. So it kind of depends on what they want to give you. So let's prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC. So that's what we want to prove. So here's what we're given. Here's our proof. Here's our shape here. So let's look at what we need to know in order to prove this. I bet we're proving it using HL. We have the 90 degrees. Do we have hypotenuse across, right? So we have those are congruent. And do we have another pair? Yeah. So all we do is state those three conditions that we needed. And then we can say they're congruent by HL theorem. So the three conditions are um, that AC is congruent to DC. Right? AC is congruent to DC. And we have this by definition of a bisector in the given information. Definition of a bisector in the given given information there. So there's our first piece that we have. These two are congruent. Right? Now the next thing that we'd want is um, uh, maybe A, B, and D, E, the other sides. A, B, and D, E. So A, B is congruent to D, E. And they're congruent because that was just given. We were just flat given that information. There was no uh, rule to go with it. The last one is we're given those perpendicular, which perpendicular implies 90 degrees. So we're given, I'm going to start this one over here for part of my proof. Okay. So we're given um, AB is congruent, oops, not congruent, I mean perpendicular to BC. And we're given DE is perpendicular to EC. And these are all line segments. And we're just given that information. So why do we have that? Because we're given it. That is going to lead to angle B and angle E and symbol in there are right angles. And they are right angles by the definition of a perpendicular line. So the definition of perpendicular lines. All right, and then the next thing that this would lead to is that um, both triangles are right triangles. That was one of our rules that we had to have. So triangle ABC um, and triangle DEC are right triangles. And how do we know they're right triangles? Uh, by the definition of a right triangle. Because they both have a right angle, right? And then this, all three of these are going to lead to our conclusion. Our conclusion is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC by HL. And there's a proof. So you have to, and, and the order, you know, Math Excel will bring up the order a little different for you, but um, the order is you have to have the three conditions, just like we did with side angle side or side um, or angle side angle. You had to show all three things that lead you to this.
Okay, and this one we had to start all the way at. Well, what does this mean? What does this mean? And we probably could have put that the that BE bisects AD before this one that leads to this one that leads to this one as well. So you might see that other step of just given the bisector before that one. So there's an idea of a proof for these. Let's look at what we might see in um, a not proof but a different problem. We might see something like. Uh, let me draw these two triangles. Uh -huh, boo -boo, oops, I bumped my camera. All right, those look pretty good. Let's say this side over here is x, and this side over here is x plus 3, and this side here is 3y, and this side here is y plus 1. Well, these are 90, and we know that these two are congruent by hl. We were given that information. Congruent by hl. So if we're given that information, we can see they're 90 degree right triangles, right? Then we can use that knowledge of hl to um, find our x's and our y's. So we're going to set up two equations. We know the hypotenuses have to be the same. So we could say that x plus 3 is going to have to equal 3y. And then our second equation would be, well, x and y plus 1. So x is going to have to equal y plus 1. The legs are also, those pairs of legs are congruent. Okay, so we know this. Now this is, um, got two unknowns, so it's two equations, two unknowns that we did last semester. So let's look at this, and we're going to use substitution to solve this one. And we're going to do that by taking, this one is x equals already. So I'm going to take this and plug it into the x into the other formula. So I'm substituting part of one into the other to solve it. Okay, so we, let's write that out. It would be y plus 1, now in the x place, plus the 3 equals the 3y. So now this is replaced by this. I do this so that I only have a y in this equation so I can find y. I am going to move the y over here, so I'm going to subtract y, subtract y, because you don't want to go to 0 and move it here and then have to move things over, and it gets confusing. So I'm going to move these y's over, and I'll add these two together. So I'm going to have 4 equals 3 minus 1 is 2y, divide by 2, and y is 2. Okay, now I can go back up and use either formula to find x. Well, this one's easy. y plus 1 is x, so 2 plus 1 is 3. So x is going to equal 3, and that's our answers. That's what it asked for on this one. Sometimes, oops, so sometimes, um, you have to go back in and find the lengths of the sides and use those numbers but this one just asks for x and y. All right, now let's use our compass and our straight edge. They tend to confuse people. I'm not really sure why the compass and straight edge are, when we use them, um, I get so many questions, but maybe the book just doesn't do a good job of explaining it. But let's, let's actually use this idea of HL um, and do a construction of a congruent triangle using HL. So first I have to have a triangle that's con that we're, we're trying to be congruent to. Hang on. Okay, so let's say this is my triangle. We know this is 90. We have to have a 90 degree angle in order for us to even look at HL theorem. So how would I pr um, draw a congruent triangle using a compass and a straight edge. Yes, you actually have to use the compass. Many of you are turning in work when I ask for the compass work constructions without the, the compass work. Well, you have to have this. So if I want a congruent one, what I'm going to start with is drawing a line. And I'm going to draw it like this first top line up here. Okay, I'm, it's, of course it's going to be a little longer, but there's a line. And what I want is I want to construct from this down a perpendicular. And the way that I did that is I'm going to set my compass just to some random length here. And I am going to pick 
a spot on here that I want to construct that perpendicular from. What I'm going to do is I am going to mark, I'm going to keep this compass at the same arc. I'm going to put an arc on both sides. Notice I'm moving my paper, not my compass. It's just easier and I put a mark same distance on both sides. Keeping it at the same width on mine wouldn't quite work because it's exactly at the center. I need it to be a little wider than half in order for this to work. So I, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and from each mark that I have, I'm gonna make an arc. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the other one, right, and I'm gonna make an arc. Now where they cross and the point that we have is a perpendicular. So I'm going to draw that. So you can't just guess a 90 degree and draw it, which is what I would see for most of your work. I need to see arcs like this that you're actually doing the constructions when you have to do constructions. Now, now we have this 90 degree angle. Boop, boop. Now we know a leg and a hypotenuse. Well, this leg's here, so it's easy to, to use. So I'm going to use this leg and um, hypotenuse. So I have my 90 degree. Now I have my, I'm setting this exactly at this distance here and I'm going to measure it off. There we go. And then this is going to be the same point as up here. Okay. Now I know the hypotenuse as well. So here's my leg. Now I can measure my hypotenuse. And from the point in which I made, the hypotenuse is going to have to cross that other thing, right, the other line there, right here. So here would be my third point, and let's draw those. And ta-da, there is your congruent triangle to this one. And they do, they look great. So what did I use? I used a 90 degree angle. I constructed my 90 degree angle using that perpendicular idea. Um, and then I measured, and I, I should see an arc, I measured the leg and the hypotenuse and I was able to get a congruent triangle. So I used the idea of a right triangle, leg and hypotenuse to draw the construction. And um, I wanted to do a construction again because they people tend to have a hard time with constructions. Um, but anyway, this whole chapter or section is mostly on hypotenuse and leg and those three things that you need for hypotenuse and leg.